in Babel. Okay, I've, I've messaged her. <laughs> Catherine, no. Uh, recording. She'll pop in when I, she pops I in. think that means it's recording. It says recording. Dot, there's no timer, though. Anyways, all right. Um, welcome, everyone. Season one reunion we have here. Uh, tonight, we have Alex. Say hi, Alex. I'm Alex. Hi. We have Lindsay. I'm a, I'm a baller. Hello. It's, it's like delayed and like going to you. We have Eric. Eric's on moose, my screen. Moose. So moose. I'm going to say moose, Eric. Moose, we moose. have Mark. Hello. We have CJ. Hey. And uh, Zubin. What's up, party people? <laughs> You're a party person. Uh, and we have Ethan, producer and future host of season three yeah how y'all doing and we should have Catherine. oh she's waiting here she is queen bring her in bring her in <clears throat> right uh, on time. all right yes <laughs> Catherine. we just started so do you want to announce your presence <laughs> randy you should go you never needed an invitation so, like they can see that. everyone i should no, wait you should go into uh like the view that's the different yeah the grid view Okay, I was gonna do it so like they could see who's speaking, but uh, oh, I like there's only nine. Here, so you'll I've got nine it. people. Like, up a All right, yeah, that'll be good. good view. Yeah, good view is good. Hi, Catherine. All right, Catherine, can you hear us all? Mm-hmm. All right, hello, hello. All right, oh, so my phone is ruining my That's life. That's me. All no right, problem. so. Uh, let's get started off. We'll talk to you guys. I have a few questions for you guys. If you guys have anything to add, I tried to pull some questions or things I think that'll help specify maybe some things that weren't conveyed or things behind the scenes. Can you tell? Things? I don't know. Hold on, Ch Taylor. Can you tell Chase to stop calling me over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> Very candid. He's what? called me for like he just keeps um, calling me. I have no idea what that's about. And I can't text him to tell him to stop because he keeps calling me. Answer for what? two seconds and say bye. <laughs> stop. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My sister. All right. Um, so I think, we're I think we're going to get started with Alex here. Um, so, um, Fire Alex. I just want to say first, a big congratulations on your win. I know it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, almost two wow. years by the time that we'll get like this out, you know. This video? This video won't yeah, Who knows that when that this video edit. will get posted? Um, Never. It's been a little over a year and a half, yes. But, <laughs> but uh, congrats on the win. Um, first, I just want to ask you, like, most people lose this game. Like, you, co you come into this game, and there's 16 people, and 15 out of 16 people lost this game. So what's it like to just not be voted out and achieve the goal you set when you came into the game? What, what was that feeling, achieving the win? Um, I mean, it feels pretty good. It's kind of surreal. Like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really process for a while that, that I actually won because it's always that, that thing, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to win. But then like when you actually do, it's like, is this how it's supposed to feel? Like you're not even really sure. Um, but it feels good. feels good. A uh, year and a half, I've kind of been able to process it and accept my win and I'm happy, but you know, uh, nervous for what's to come. You never know. It could, it could blindside me in real life. That'd be Dude, the snakes are always out there. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Alex, you were a big fan coming into this game, probably our biggest on this specific cast. I mean, I think maybe Catherine would give you a run for your money there. Is Zubin's not a bigger fan? What? I've been watching since the first season. Oh, yeah, dude, true. he could have been on so endurance. Zubin dude. got that's the age true. of so endurance. Zubin there too, but you, you, were, you were up there in turn. Lindsay's a big fan too, actually. So I don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like, I feel like you gave the really stereotypical super uh, fan vibe you're like and a lot of the times the super fan gets overconfident and flames out we, we've seen it time and time again on the show but i feel like you really succeeded there so like i mean of course you succeeded you won but um 
do you think being a super fan really helped you win this game or do you think you had to kind of balance like all your knowledge of the show with like this is the real thing this is different what what do you think of that uh, i think it, it obviously wasn't a detriment to my game uh i i mean i had i had a little bit too many ideas at some point i think getting knocked down when eric got voted out really helped me uh get in a good mindset where I, where, where I couldn't, like, I had too many fantasies, I guess, but then it was more real, and I had to just put my nose down and do what I had to do. I don't, like, I didn't think that, other than, like, knowing how the game worked, it didn't really have that much of an impact. Obviously, like, Mark didn't know anything about it until he started, and he got to the third place spot. So, so I think it just is more that I was able to be social and, and use that knowledge in a productive way, and, yeah. Like, I think it helped, but also, you know, you can be stupid and get voted out pre-merge, though. So. Double-edged sword. Because I think some people, some people give the aura of knowing too much, and then, and then they get voted out because of it. I think uh, I didn't try to focus on that too much, though, publicly at least. So I guess on that note, you touched on it, but your, your low point in the game was probably maybe the Megan vote. I know that wasn't maybe – too hurtful of you because you were like, ah, oh, Megan, whatever. But Megan yeah. vote, Eric vote, twice in a row you got kind of blindsided. So how did you pick up the pieces and work your way to the end? And I think you voted correctly every time since. Yes, I mean, I should have been voted out at the Megan vote. I, and I still, to this day, uh, don't really know what happened there. I don't think anyone knows what really happened there other than Lindsay, no. what happened there? You were there. I mean, like Megan, Megan started being sketchy. She wanted to like, um. So first, like, we were talking about splitting because we were trying to plan for idols there. And when we talked, so when we talked out the split, she started. And I, I know Catherine was like a little involved in this too. Like Megan started being weird about wanting to. First, she wanted to vote Raph out. And then when we said, like, you know, like, it'll, you know, if we do this, it'll all go fine. She was like, may the odds be in our favor. I'm like, why are you being all ominous? We have a concrete plan. So then it was just, like, too many sketchy vibes. And, um, I mean, we were right. She didn't vote the way she was supposed to. She just voted for, it was supposed to be a split that would have gotten rid of Alex. But then she, and she was supposed to vote for Alex, but she didn't. Um... So, like, regardless, she still, she, I don't know if she just didn't know or what, but, yeah, she was trying to pull some fishy stuff. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, continuing on your question, you uh, never know. thank you for giving some more clarity there, Lindsay. Um, I, I think when you get knocked down and you realize that you don't have all the options that you thought you had, it really puts things into perspective of what you have to do to get to the end. And, for a lot of it, I was focused on what I had to do to get to the end. And I think I was able to clearly see that, like what I really had to do after Eric got voted out and I was in the minority. Cause I really had to, I had to play the game. I couldn't just like sit and be complacent in the majority. So I think because of that, I was able to see my path to the end. Um, and then sometimes I got a little bit too big for my britches. Like at the final five, I really, I really was like high on my, my own supply there for, Little bit, but um, I think just being on the bottom gives you a lot of stuff that you don't get when you're on the top. And I was on the bottom for pretty much the rest of the game at that point. All right. Um, I guess continuing on, what was your favorite moment of the game as a whole? I mean, you experienced the whole game from day one to day 77, I think, season one. Yeah, was. we had 77. Uh, I mean, favorite moment is two one one baby. Like, how could you, how could you even describe? Uh, and I, you know, sorry CJ, but I had to do it to you, kid. Um, it, it was it was what I like when I came up with that idea. Mark was like, "Dude, I don't know how we're we're not gonna at least go to a tiebreaker." And I'm like, "We'll split the vote." And and it didn't it didn't seem like it would ever work. It shouldn't have ever worked. But when it, it work it was just it, I, I felt pure joy in that moment um and i, I would never want to go a different way because i mean the other way i'd probably go home in a tiebreaker challenge so that wouldn't be fun all right um just to wrap up what what did you what did you think of the experience as a whole alex well the experience is probably the it's the most fun i've had in college uh, i wouldn't 
place it for anything. I'm glad that I got to meet all the people and uh, enjoy it. Like, even if I lost, I think it still would have been the most uh, enjoyable thing that I've done in college so far. All right. Well, speaking of a loss, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lindsay. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I had to. Um, Lindsay, so close to the win, Lindsay. One vote away. I mean, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. You've had you've had a lot of time to digest that one, though. But I think you showed yourself to be a very strong player this season in a lot of uh, facets of the game. So, what do you think was ultimately? Your, your downfall and the reason for the loss, can you pin it to any moment, any mindset? What do you think? Um, I guess I would say two things. I think the first would be I wasn't the one to like – like I didn't talk to a lot of people. I didn't have a lot of strong relationships. Like that wasn't my strong suit. I think that was like Raph's thing. He was the super like charismatic, friendly guy. So like – Bingo. So that like, and I, because, because we knew he could like go talk to people and like do what he had to do. I didn't worry about that so much. And I think because I didn't have relationships with people, um, that obviously didn't help me. And then, I mean, Mark's right. I, I was stubborn at times. I'll give it to him. I, I might've been a little harsh. I don't know. <laughs> So, Lindsay, you had a big immunity streak right towards the end. Your, your, your best ally, Raph, gets voted out. And those were two necessary wins for you. And you got mm-hmm. both of them. What did, what did that feel like, winning both of those, knowing it was do or die? Good. It was like, uh, I thought about it for so long. Like, I, would, I remember after the, the, we did the challenge right after Raph got voted out. And I remember, like, going back to my dorm and being like, wow, that just happened. Holy crap. Like if I hadn't won, like I would have nothing to do right now. I would have nothing like, you know? So I mean, it was, yeah. And it was, it was also like coming off of, I think the challenge before that was the one where I had like the huge lead and blew it. So I felt like I kind of like redeemed myself a little bit. So Lindsay, I mean, Raph isn't here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, big guys in Australia mm-hmm. uh, keep him to himself, probably sleeping. I think it's like 8, 9 a.m. But you had a tight relationship with Raph in this game. You, you had tight relationships with Raph and CJ, but I think mm-hmm. specifically Raph. So let's talk about that a little. What was that bond like in this game or in, in meeting Raph? You froze. I heard meeting. I assume just meeting. What, what was that bond like with Raph? And oh, okay. Um, actually, so oddly enough, we met before the season even started. Like, we met at some random party the first weekend. He didn't even remember meeting me because he was like super drunk. And I was like, "Oh, you were at that party? It was this random apartment party. Like, it was like me and my roommate. These like dumb freshmen trying to get into something." And um. And then there was, so, like, I kind of mentioned that to him, and then he was diabetic, so that was, like, good. I remember at the food challenge, he was telling me about, like, one of his tattoos. So I think we just got along really well, and we had, like, a very strong friendship, which kind of made it easy to play the game together. Lindsay, you had, I'd say, a dominant start in this game. You won a lot of challenges during the pre-merge. You had control of the majority but you kind of lost it towards the end, I feel like. Those last two votes, the RAF vote, the CJ vote, and then obviously you had all the power in the last vote. Mm. But um, do you have any regrets on how the end game went? Is it as simple as I shouldn't have trusted CJ? <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I, I think I trusted CJ as much as I trusted RAF, um, which obviously was a mistake. And then... I would say second of all, I don't think we should have voted out Catherine. I think we should have voted out Mark or Alex at that point. Well, because, yeah. but, but, but if you to wanted me, to win, you had to vote out one of us to, so you could bring Catherine to the end because you needed her at that point. But to me, like, in my, I, I guess what went into that decision was like, okay, if we get rid of Catherine, it doesn't matter because we still have the numbers to get rid of one of them next. Like, it, CJ flipping wasn't even a thought in my mind. So it was like we had a 4-2 advantage, so going down to a 3-2 advantage wasn't a huge deal. Obviously, it ended up being a huge deal. Um, 
but that was kind of the logic, I think. Do you remember I wanted to vote out Mark at that point? I don't know if you remember that, Lindsay. Yeah, I do. He did. CJ wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to get CJ, him. you always wanted to vote out Mark. Every That's single CJ and Mark <laughs> always wanted to vote out each other. That's why oh, I got so much work. beef, CJ. I don't know what I did. <laughs> that's why that's why we didn't like uh raf and i didn't think too much about it because it was like well cj always wants to get out mark so it's just like another week <laughs> <laughs> guys what do you what game do you think Catherine's playing animal crossing animal crossing oh, oh zoom meaning has been upgraded by the host hey! wow good job zoom, zoom right you notified you me. thank you zoom um <laughs> oh, gee. thank god um so I guess to wrap things up, Lindsay, what was your favorite specific part or just anything of the experience that you really enjoyed? My favorite specific moment would be uh, winning the immunity after Raph was voted out. Cause like, that was like a back against the wall moment. And I like, yeah, I don't know. That was a good moment. And then, I mean, yeah, like Alex said, this has been the best thing I've done in college. Like, for one of my friends was asking me, um, she's thinking about going to UConn, and, and this is what I talked about. I was like, there's so many fun things to do. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, my favorite thing that I've done. All right. Um, Ryan, can I ask her a question? Uh, sure. Keep it it's an important you question. No, we got unlimited this. minutes. Go for All it. Right, something that the audience <laughs> needs to know. It's our, about her and Raph. Our lives oh, don't um, have It's not about if they, would, if they were dating. We all know that they weren't. No. I'm sorry, CJ. Your fantasy isn't reality. <laughs> All right, Alex. I had a boy but, 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 but Alex, question. Is, question. Lindsay, so yeah. w- was your plan to go to the end with Raph? And if so, did you think you could beat him? Because I think that's something that we weren't sure about. My, yeah, my plan was to go to the end, and I wasn't. I didn't think I'd beat him. But, like, I just – I don't know. I mean, for me, it was, like, at that point, I couldn't – I couldn't go all the way to – the end and then like turn on him I kind of like what you said about Mark like you wouldn't want to if if you won you wouldn't want to get rid of Mark I mean and take me because like you play the whole game together but I wasn't I was I felt more confident about winning against you than I would have felt about winning against Raph and I lost you so but you didn't mop the floor with me like you said you would what Raph probably would have beaten you more than I would. That I yeah, did. I I agree. I agree. I know for a fact I would have voted for Raph in an instant. <laughs> Thanks. Just um. All right. I think we're we're gonna move on. Thank you, Lindsay. Um. Mm-hmm. So Mark, Mark, our big final juror for the season. So yes, let let's get to the challenge that took you out. I mean, I know challenges weren't your strong suit for the no. season. No. But I got to say, that was a very long challenge, a very cold challenge. I can say firsthand that it was definitely not fun, and I wasn't ang- at a bent angle with my knees and legs, I, even though I, I, th- I still think I was probably the coldest person there. But hey, I'm going to chime in and say, by far, Grandy was the coldest person there. There were mm-hmm. multiple trips I made to get him warmer clothes and hot chocolate. It was bad. But uh, Mark, what was that challenge like for you? And then ultimately the decision to step off the Husky. Oof. All right. Uh, I'd say overall, you know, obviously it sucked. But, um, you know, to me, it was kind of like while I was there, I was like, man, like I've come a long way. You know, I didn't really when I first came into it, I was like, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh you know, by final three, I really wanted to win at that point. And like, I I just, that's kind of what kept me going for so long. And then letting go, I just, I could tell that I wasn't going to win. I had a final at 8 a.m. the next day. Like, I don't know, <laughs> after so long and like, I was just in pain and cold and tired. And I don't know, after like four hours, it wears on you a little bit and so, yeah, I, I just didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, you know what? There's still a chance Alex wins. So I'm just going to see what happens. So, Mark, you were someone 
very early on in this process, we recruited you. I think you you were definitely the first person we ever had on board for this. I, I think Ethan and technically was the first person we had on board, but then when Ethan became a producer, uh, you were someone we knew freshman year and we got you on board. You knew nothing really about Survivor except what you learned in the first few days. So what was it like? taking an experience you were going completely blind into against a lot of people that are maybe big super fans of this game and taking it almost all the way to the end? Um, I thought it was interesting. You know, I didn't really feel like I was at a disadvantage, especially earlier on, because it's kind of just like basic social skills. <laughs> like, as long as you know enough to reach out to people, it really wasn't that hard. So... I mean, I think if you just kind of have the right mindset about it, whether or not you know, like, all the strategy and stuff, you kind of figure that out as you go, um, just talking to other people. Like, obviously, I talked to Alex a lot. I learned a lot from Alex. So um, you kind of just pick that up as you go. But, I mean, as long as you've got some sort of, like, charisma to yourself, some sort of thing to talk about, if you're friendly with people, you can do fine. Um, and that's kind of what I built my whole game on. Um, and I don't think I did on purpose. It was just kind of naturally how the game went for me, just kind of the ebb and flow. Um, Mark, the the final four w vote was a combination of me, you and Alex's efforts. We'll go into more detail of that with CJ, but specifically in that moment, we see you with like the big fist pump and you and Alex getting all excited. What? Well, what was that round and moment? Excuse me. What was that round and moment like for you? Oh, that that whole round was just like a mess. It was just a roller coaster because I remember like after the challenge, I was like, "Oh, we're good." Like Lindsay's mad at CJ. Easy vote. We're just gonna go three one CJ. And then I meet with Lindsay like a day later, and then she's like, "Nope, we're not voting CJ. We're voting Alex." My heart like dropped because I was like, "All right." Looks like it's gonna be like two two, either me or Alex. Like fuck. So um, you know it's kind of up and down. And then we came up with the whole plan, trying to you know basically cause any sort of miscommunication that we can. Like Alex and I were like faking text messages about CJ and like showing them to CJ, and we were telling them different things and just basically anything we could do to get them to split them up. Like. I explained that whole idea where I was like, oh, like, I'll vote for Alex, which was never going to happen. Um, all that sort of deal. So it was kind of just chaos up until the vote. And then once I saw, um, I think the third vote was Alex. I saw like 111. I knew uh, that it, we got it. So yeah, at that point, it was just like, oh my God, we did it. Um, and it was probably the best feeling in the entire game, just being able to pull that off. All right. Um, we have a a new guest. Um, if they're gonna join, um, let's see. And we have Raph, Raph joining in. Hello, Raph. Raph, are you at work? He's connecting to audio, I think. So yeah, he looks like he's at work. Or, or he's got some <laughs> interesting attire. What's up, What's Raph? Up, Raph? Hey. You at work, Raph? I don't think you can hear. I don't. Him. I don't think yeah, he can hear us. He hasn't joined audio. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, he's still working on it. He's connecting. Um. <laughs> All right. We'll move on. We'll move on to CJ until Raf's audio connects at least. Um. So. Oh no! Wait. No, I had one more for Mark. So Mark. <laughs> okay. What was what was the biggest or your favorite moment of experience? Maybe besides the final four vote, you talked on that, but what what was the what was the best part of it all for you? Uh, let's see the best part. Um, outside of the final four, uh, I'd say probably uh, when I first got to the merge, uh, right because I hit like rock bottom because Mackenzie had just got idled out. And I was like, oh, man. And then I started thinking about the merge and stuff. And so when I found out that we merged, that was, like, probably one of the most optimistic points for me just because I felt like 
you know, I made it this far, like I can keep going, things are going to open up now. So yeah, I think once I made it to the marriage, that was definitely one of my favorite moments. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, we got a little chat here. Raph, we miss you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Raph, can you hear us yet? He's frozen. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're going to move on to CJ. CJ, our fourth placer. CJ. Um, yeah, you can't hear. Can we hear CJ? Oh, hey. No, we, yeah, we can hear him. Um, no, he, can, no, he, he can't hear us. No, no. I yeah, Raf can. Yeah, we're just gonna ask CJ oh. questions, Zubin. All right. <laughs> it's like, all right, CJ, we had a big exit from you. I think ultimately there was so much going on during that round. It was hard to process. Like, how did we end up with a two-one vote? One <laughs> vote. How does that happen? So, take me through how that experience <laughs> happened for you. Well, like once, like well, my thought was like I was gonna try and like pair up with Lindsay regardless because I I would I was trying to get Mark out anyway at the final four so I can split Alex and Mark and then Lindsay and Raph. That was my whole plan. So I get one from each and then try and get like Alex and Lindsay to both take me to the end. That was my game plan going in. So regardless of Lindsay winning immunity, at that point I was like, all right, I'm just gonna me and Lindsay I'm gonna try and get Lindsay to vote with me. And then and even if it comes to a two two tiebreaker my thought was Mark's worse of the challenges than Alex. So I'd have a better shot beating Mark in a tiebreaker than Alex. Although I'm not a really good shot at winning a tiebreaker anyway. So that was my whole thought going into it. And I was just hoping that Lindsay would be on board to vote Mark. Um, CJ, I'd say you were a pretty big strategic force in this game. You had you you basically flipped the the first Casson vote on its head. I think Zubin <laughs> seemed pretty set to be going home, and you kind of got Lindsay and Raf on board to vote Issa instead of Zubin. And then <laughs> um, later we have your idol play, and we have um, you let Raf in again. We, and we have the the final five vote. You make the big move to betray your your long term alliance of Raph and Lindsay. So we'll touch on that. But um, uh, I lost my question. Where is it? <laughs> Cut that out. The final four vote before like we can completely move on. Oh yeah, if it felt to me that it. Yeah, we'll get. We'll Rap, get can you hear it. it felt to me that as long as Lindsay hadn't won immunity, you would have been in a great spot to win. What do you think about the final five on? Do you do you regret flipping uh, on Raph and Lindsay because it sent you out the next round? Do you think you were just unlucky? Do you think it could have been played differently? What do you think? Well, I don't really, I don't really regret how I did it. It's just, I mean. It was unfortunate the way things went down at the final four, but you know I have no regrets. I I had fun regardless. Like the, all the final four was, every, I like I loved everyone there. Love love you final four, but um, you know I have no regrets going into it. But I just wish it. I wish I had gone down differently. I wish I had gone down. I wish me and Mark had played in the tiebreaker challenge. That would have been insane. But uh, you know it, it is what it is. Um. I guess maybe open forum for Alex, CJ, Mark, Lindsay, so so we can wrap up this this final four vote. What what went into that that CJ and Lindsay weren't on the same page? Because that that was the key is getting two people that you thought were working together not to work together. So was that just what was that? So probably the weirdest part about this whole thing is that like an hour before the vote, I'm eating dinner and i'm texting cj and he's like we got to get Lindsay on the same page about the mark vote so i'm like okay what do you want me to say to Lindsay?" cj is like feeding me lines to say to Lindsay, and i'm just repeating whatever cj says to Lindsay. and then Lindsay's gonna reply to me and i send a screen conversation back to cj and then cj tells me what to say to her and then that's just going on for a while and essentially they talked through me and agreed to vote for mark so CJ thought that 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 was actually going to happen but Lindsay was just like playing me, I guess, to try to get not to vote for or to get me to vote for Mark. Or I don't even I don't know if she was like 
being serious in that conversation, but it was really weird and somehow convinced CJ that like me and Lindsay were both voting for Mark at that point. Uh, maybe Lindsay can speak on that since she was on the other end of it. Um, I, so there was a point where I kind of realized like, no matter what, I think CJ really just wants to vote for Mark. So at the point where I said, so CJ was like, very very trusting that alex was gonna vote for mark um so to me like at, so so like this entire everything leading up to this was cj being like i think alex will vote mark i want to vote mark i think alex will vote mark so i kind of just was finally like okay vote mark and like i mean i still planned on voting alex but like i wasn't going to change my mind and i didn't really think i was going to change his mind so it's just kind of like so so who did you think mark was voting for do you think mark was voting for alex as well or i thought think? there was a chance mark would vote for alex but i knew it was like obviously a risk to work with mark after you know yeah um mark do you have any last comments on that before we move on uh i don't know i think they got it like basically i think we just convinced cj that alex was voting me so at that point it kind of let Lindsay say like all right well mark's getting two votes let's see if mark will vote for alex that's kind of yeah. i think I mean, what yeah. ended up happening yeah and then i, I kind of figured like even if i take a chance on mark voting for alex like if cj is this confident alex will vote for mark then like that's two anyways so that makes sense all right um cj one of your big moments in this game was the idol play you, you took out mckenzie right at the end of the pre-merge um what was that like getting all the votes for yourself and being able to wipe them all out and you decide who goes home well yeah well the one person that really helped me throughout that whole thing was earl because earl was basically telling me what was going to happen because i was just like they were all saying to Earl, like, oh, yeah, vote CJ. So we're all going to vote CJ. And then Earl comes up to me, like, two hours before and is like, oh, Eric, like, might vote might vote for me. And I was like, like, for Earl. So I was like, oh, God, that's a disaster because I didn't want it to end up in a tie and then them all vote Earl. So I literally went to McKenzie and I just threw Eric under the bus. I was like, we got to get Eric out right now. I'm like, I'm like, man. So then she, like, took McKenzie took that and, and like, basically gave it to Eric and Eric's like oh shit like we gotta actually like we gotta actually vote for CJ now so like that was my whole plan so that it didn't get tied up and it was just it was crazy when I realized that all the votes were on me so in that same topic we'll jump to one of Eric's questions I had from Eric you almost considered voted voting Earl at the McKenzie vote which would have saved McKenzie because Earl would definitely have gone home on the revote. I think McKenzie would have had you you and mark so um what stopped you from from making that decision even up to going up to the voting thing you were still considering it so. yeah i i remember i was sitting at the uh like urn talking to ethan i was like man you know what i think i'm gonna vote for earl and then i was like mm, i don't know maybe, uh, uh. and then i was trying to you know do some cost uh weight analysis and whatnot some fancy terms or whatever but I was, uh, I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it just, like, it hit my head. I was like, it's not going to change anything if I vote Earl or um, CJ in this aspect. And I was like, I mean, I guess he could put play an idol, but I don't think he will. It's, like, not like he would have had to have found it. It's not like someone gave it to him. And I wasn't planning that CJ did have an idol. And I just thought, like, I mean, if I vote for Earl, then I know Earl's going to hate me forever because he'll know it was me. And I don't want to, I don't want Earl to hate me. But it turns out he did. <laughs> turns anyway. out he voted you out the next vote. <laughs> <laughs> so. so, whatever. <laughs> All right. Back, back to CJ. Uh, CJ, what was the biggest part? of this experience for you that you enjoyed either a moment or just aspect of playing survivor yukon honestly i just liked like meeting everyone and like talking to everyone like like once it got to the merge i was like literally just trying to talk to like every every single person like 
like that was on our trap. Like I literally tried to reach out. Like I tried to reach out to Eric like a bunch of times, and Eric was just like, "Yeah, like all right." So I was like, "All right, time to go, like, time, to go to the, time to go to the next person." So yeah, that I, adds up. <laughs> so then I went to go reach out to Alex, and then I reached out to Mark, and I tried to I just tried to talk to everyone and just try to get to know them like on a personal level a little bit, even if it was just outside the game. I tried to definitely separate that with uh, my strategic play. Nice. All right. Well, thank you, CJ. And let's go to Raf. Raf, can you can you hear me? Can you talk? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, Raf. What's up, everyone? What's up, Raf? Dingo. Yeah, miss you guys. Miss you, man. Uh, Raf. So I think in this game, a big part of you being in this game is you were like a constant, like positive presence in this game. I feel like everyone liked you, no matter. Who was who was, was or wasn't working with you? And I, I think that's a big reason that even CJ realized shit. I, I can't work with Raph or I can't take him in. Yeah. So what what was that final five vote like for you? Did you have any hint that it might be you going home that night? Um, I was expecting it. Like it's not expecting fully, but I said from before I said I had my final five in mind. And I was in there. I was happy with it. Like, no hard feelings. Um, we literally, like, that was one of my favorite moments when I actually spent um, CJ's birthday. Like, we actually drank at my, my place. Um, and then, turns out, the next day, he actually boats me out. So, that was actually... <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that, because that was my very first snowfall. Very oh. first snowfall. And yeah, then, I too, and then I drank... I drank with CJ, one of my close friends there, and then the next day, both. <laughs> so I would never forget that. But I still, I still, I still, you know, I'm good. It's cool. You're, you're good. <laughs> um, Raf, what was you along with Lindsay? You were a big challenge player in this game. Um, what do you think? I, f- I think people underestimated you at first. At least I underestimated you when I sorted the tribes. Because I was like, oh, Raph's kind of short. We can put him on this side. But then, <laughs> but then I think a big reason for Kasten's dominance was you, you Lindsay, uh, Catherine. Moose. I mean, I expected Eric to be great at challenges. But I, I don't think I expected the level that Lindsay, you, and Catherine would be, like, really good at these challenges. So... What, what what do you think ab- about your your dominance challenge wise in that game? Do you th- do you think that was another big reason that led to your vote out? Yeah, no, like I I knew from the from the very beginning that I'm gonna be like competitive. I knew that. Um, I'm gonna be friendly. I knew that. So it's just pretty much using like the other aspects of like the game that's kind of like let me down, I guess. But you know what? I'm still cool with that. That's how positive I am. <laughs> like, it's it's great. Like, I had fun. The challenges were great. Like, yeah. Expect the unexpected, I guess. Expect the unexpected. Brother, wow. <laughs> uh, Raph, what was your favorite moment or part of the Survivor Yukon experience? Ooh. There's a lot. Like, there's a lot of highlights. Um... But as far, like just meeting everyone, that's I guess that's such a cliche answer, but it's it literally is one of my favorites. Um drinking with CJ the night before I got out. That was oh, that was just hard. <laughs> um, that was your birthday too. Oh that that's that that just was still love you, bro. Um and and yeah, and, and just um and just the time with um Lindsay as well, just, um, you know, meeting her family kind of thing, just showing me around Boston, Massachusetts. Like, it was just, it, it was great. It was great. That, those are, like, probably up there in terms of what I got out of um, Survivor Yukon. Like, that was just, those are, those are memorable for me. All right. Those lastly, two. Raph, how's the hashtag Raph Ventures? Is it, <laughs> is it, is it on delay it because of the virus? It's on delay? Yes, it's still happening, but you know what? It's I, it's gonna keep going. <laughs> I need to see those sick dabs on my timeline. <laughs> <laughs> no, those were actually specifically for Rafa Exchange 2018. Oh, okay. 
yes. I, I always have uh, every time there's a trip i always have my signature moves and for oh, that really? one it was, yeah. <laughs> what's so your you late, what's your latest move on the latest trip oh uh, it's just being at a beach just chilling <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have nothing. I've been busy with work, you know, just, you know, that's life. You can tell I'm at work. I'm on my break. I was like, lucky I'm, I'm the boss today. So I'm like, guys, I'm heading out with my Zoom. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> fun. <laughs> oh, good. Um, yeah. But I got to go soon too. So they're calling me now. So yeah. yeah, no problem. All right, Raph, it was great to have you here. Thank yes. you for calling Thank in. You guys Hope work goes Bye, well. Raph. And- Love you, Raph. Yeah. 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 Love Good you to guys. talk to you. Thank you, my guy. You were excellent All the right. whole time. Bye. Bye. Uh, love you guys. Bye. So funny. Love him. All <laughs> right. Hero. Catherine, I think you need to put down the switch. You're, you're up. Catherine, Hi. what are you playing Animal Crossing? No, I'm not. I'm playing Stardew Valley. Oh, uh, that's, that's oh, another good choice. Like the, good one. the original. That's after the first Animal Crossing. <laughs> yes. All right. Catherine, you were a big personality this season, to, to say the least. Where did you get such a colorful vocabulary? <laughs> um, my mother. Oh. Uh, good answer. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, Catherine, I think ironically, you... no, she's mortified about my appearance on the uh show. It's like every time an episode would come out, like I'd get like this pit in my stomach because I knew I would get a text from my mother saying, Jesus Christ, I can't believe you. <laughs> Catherine, you knew this was all going to be recorded and uploaded. Yeah. You, you, you chose this path, yeah. All right, <laughs> Catherine, I think. You are one of the most colorful characters of the season, but then I think your boot round was like a bit unceremonious after like all the lead up to the merge. What do you think you could have done differently to prevent like you being voted out six? So I absolutely could have been more engaged. I'll stick by this on say because of how big of a personality I am. I was afraid to be a. Uh, uh, what's this? I was I was afraid to be Doug because I'm somebody who stands out as it is. I'm tall. I talk a little funny. I have a little bit of a quirky personality, and so especially combine that with the fact that I do know the game and I didn't really make an effort to hide that. I knew that if I just breathed, it would be so easy to target me. And compared to like if we were out on an island in College Survivor, you can't see stuff like oh who's sleeping together in like the little uh thing at night or who's like going off to the well with everybody else because especially since this is the first of the first for this uh specific edition of college survivor you just don't know what other people are doing and as me as somebody who can't afford to really step out there i became passive and i didn't get out of my passiveness quick enough because I, I was definitely thinking about, okay, what if I try and like get with her on the other side or, oh, like work with like some of these other strange purple people. But I just, between like me, cause it was my first semester up at the campus, between that and me not knowing what other people were doing and then like just, just everything, I just didn't quite take the opportunity to look at my options and secure those relationships. So, ultimately, towards the end, at Final Tribal, I think we saw you as the biggest swing vote between Kath, between Lindsay and Alex. I almost said Catherine. But I, I think you, your mind didn't seem made up. So what, what, what led to you eventually deciding Alex was who you think deserved to win this game? So for me, it was the matter of fact of, There was somebody who did not, uh, so from how I saw it there, basically the number one thing that determined it was if Lindsay could not convince me that she, like, wouldn't take Raph to the end, I was not voting for Lindsay because, like, she knew kind of what she was doing, but she just wasn't doing it, she wasn't doing the right things. And meanwhile, for Alex, a lot of the things that he accomplished were 
very situational, like circumstances aligning, like the, like so many times where he should have gotten voted out or things like where just like casting kind of like went against each other and all of that. And basically it's just about game awareness. I think Alex had more game awareness than Lindsay. Right. Catherine, um, what was the biggest moment or your favorite moment of the experience? So this is, okay, so I'm going to say this for two reasons. And it's the second challenge, the food eating challenge. Mm -hmm. Because I've always wanted to do that. Um, and I was, it was just a lot of fun. And I think right there, because like I just, I was, I was saying how like I kind of got a little bit passive, but there, like, I, I just felt like me, and I liked kind of, like, making fun of Erica a little bit. I love seeing everybody else, and, like, Alex struggle with the capers and stuff, and <laughs> a part two to that is, that t challenge also is near and dear to me, because I met the love of my life, like, literally 10 minutes after that challenge. So. 10 minutes? Is that when he, you, like, swiped on Tinder together? <laughs> Oh well, no, that's when we were in McMahon you, together you and we had that's... like a had like a three hour lunch. That's awesome. I didn't know that's it was good. that day. I knew it was around then. Um all right. Um any I actually have a Catherine question real quick. I wanted yes, to put out yes, there. Yes, please. So me and Catherine um had a had a conversation one time where it was very vulnerable where um you talked about how, like on the show, no one's gonna know this. Like you felt like um, you were being like judged and like put down, but I don't think that was like for, like happened on the show, fortunately. And you were very like concerned about your image, which no one would have imagined because you were so like big and bold. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, like the growth you represented in your first semester at a new place and like meeting all these new people through this crazy adventure like, like go, in, go into that, how, like, it was very, like, growth oriented for you. Mm -hmm. Wait, I, wait. Oh, I that guess question? that was a question. <laughs> that was more. A yeah, it wasn't well worded. <laughs> but, <It's> like, more, <laughs> uh, but like, I don't know. I've, I watched you, like, we had that conversation where you, you said, like, you wanted to pull yourself from the game almost because you felt like it was an emotional drain. And you were so worried about how you were perceived. Like, how did you grow to, the, like, be more confident in that so representation? for me, it's about, because I, uh, ironically enough, I am 100% a people pleaser. I like making people happy. It's why I try and use the best of, like, my big character. And if every once in a while I'll get, like, those moments where it's, like, I'm afraid that I hurt somebody or that I left them with a bad experience or I just, I just like feel a little bad about it and like in a game like this where it's very socially vulnerable and you don't and and these things are oftentimes kind of they're structured just because of how the game works where your social interactions are just are uh objectified into like categories of alliances and votes and all of that and after I got voted out, it made, it made me sad, not because oh, I lost the game and stuff, but because I'm like, did I do a good job at being a good person, especially with how big of a character, character I was. And so, ultimately, uh, yeah, we got to post game and we got to see more of like who everybody really is and stuff. And I really do hold Survivor Yukon near and dear to my heart. All right. Well, well, thank you, Catherine. It was a pleasure to have you on season okay. one. Okay. I'm going to play video games now. All right. Have fun. I didn't swear <laughs> once. Are you proud of me? What? For I what? didn't swear once. You, you didn't have I'm to shocked. not swear, but I, I am proud of you. Piss off. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's the Catherine. I All right. Um, going down the line, we have the moose, Eric DeWitt. Yo, yo, yo. Our, 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 our up, big player? our big merge boot of the season. So you were our moose. And honestly, I think my favorite moment was after you were voted out and you had a very bread-based uh, 
some I exit did. lines. Were you planning that speech? Was that or was that no. off the cuff? Off the dome, baby. That's what did, I'm talking about. Had you about. like read something? Like, how did you think of that? Um, I don't know. I think it was just like I definitely saw something on the internet that was very like bread uh based puns. And I just it was just in my head. So I had to roll with it, you know? It was so out of left field, but it was so funny. Um what happened that you ended up being the merge vote? Do you think you didn't manage your connections well? You didn't think you didn't manage your threat level well? It was it a combination of them? What, um, what happened? I mean, obviously Earl happened. But I, I in other all than honesty, that, I think it came down to Earl. I remember he texted me and he's like, Eric, do you like me? And I was like, Oh yeah, Earl, you're great. And then at the same time, I was like, But like, you, you're Earl. Everyone loves you. I think that you're a, uh, um, because I'm. I can only imagine that CJ told him or someone told like Mackenzie told him that I was thinking about voting for him. And I, and he was just like, Oh, like, what did I do to you? And I was like, um, you didn't do anything. It's just, I don't know. That's, that's what I was thinking. So I, he just did not like the way I guess I answered his question of if you like me or not. That was and what then, he came to us with. Yeah. Was that was, conversation that you're talking about. He was yeah. like, he was like, yeah, he told me he'd vote me out. So that's why I'm going to flip. So I was like, <laughs> and it was just like, oh, but like, Earl, what do you want me to do? I, I can't <laughs> say like, I wouldn't, you already knew that I was about to vote you out. And I mean, that really came down to it. But in all honesty, I wasn't really playing the craziest game. I was trying to have some fun, which I feel like definitely came across that way. And I thought I enjoyed enjoyed my time there. So, I mean, I think I was an easy vote definitely in that case because people knew that – I think they were scared that I could win challenges because I'm ape shit. But <laughs> – You're ape shit? I'm going wild, baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't know. I think it, I think it really just came down to everyone was like, whatever, he's a vote and it'll definitely hurt the numbers on the other side. All right. What was the biggest moment or favorite moment for you across this game? Um, I don't know. I have to say in all honesty, my favorite moment was when I was thinking like, I think CJ is going to try and pull something at this vote. And I had like, just like a crazy second intuition like even when I was walking up to vote I was like oh man I really should vote for Earl I just like have some strange feeling that something's happening I mean salty that I didn't enact on it but yes yeah, so your favorite moment was when you didn't make the god play <laughs> yeah no it's like I I just like that I intuitively knew something was up so that kind of felt good to know that my own being was sort of like Hold up, take read this read the situation out. I mean, other than that, I I also really liked how on the very first challenge when uh just Cassin dominated. It was so fun. That that was pretty funny to see uh no one could get a, a ball across a wooden beam on the Sapala tribe. I mean, no one could do it like CJ and I did. Definitely. You know it. <laughs> Me and Earl have done it. It's just that, you know, we yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't it really think you wasn't. guys had it. It was unfortunate that we went first, you know. All right. I don't well. think you guys had it in you, but I. <laughs> I poor strategy. Look, if, I like... if you can track Earl down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No one can get in touch with him. He's, he's out of this world. Fly me out to Texas. Um, oh, one. Another, another part of the game I loved was when. Uh, <laughs> Doug and I drank milk. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a bit of an off-camera moment, but I think after the habanero round, Doug and Eric went to South Dining Hall together, and I think they we, each we, had they each had like a like a whole thing of milk. They just took them out, just take them out yeah. of the freezer. And it was actually the after the group because we saw like Eric coming back with milk. Right? Yeah, yeah. You you guys brought it back and you just yeah, had we did. Alan, you were just chugging. <laughs> it was just insane. Like actually getting to talk to Doug in that moment was wild because he is 
he's we, something else. We all wish we got to talk to Doug more, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> Doug was I, great. I Doug. never interacted with him at all, and I kind of wish I did, just to, uh, like... The I almost did. I met with him <laughs> once. <laughs> Oh, I got a lot of Doug time. I saw him at uh, a solid training, and I, I like tried to. I said hi, and he just like grunted at me. Like he. Didn't- oh no. <laughs> um. All right, so that's all I got. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. No we're, problem, we're Ryan. It was present. a pleasure to be on the show. It was a pleasure to have you. Um, Zubin, let's let's get to Zubin. What's up, man? Ah, uh, living. Living. Mind. That's, that's- that's what we're kind all trying fast. to do. That's Zub Daddy to you, Ryan. Come on. Uh, Zubin, we saw you had a a big alliance early game. I think is a big part of the first episode, few episodes. You have this alliance with CJ and Catherine. That was it was a catalyst in you being saved from being the initial vote on the Casting Tribe. So, what led to that group being formed, and you think its ultimate success on the ESA vote? Okay, so when I. On the very first day, I think the first two people I talked to were actually Catherine and CJ. I mean, because, or actually, no, because I, I knew I was able to talk to Catherine, like, like right after the first round when we utterly just, you know, killed it. And I was able to uh, get in touch with CJ through GroupMe. So that's where I started uh, getting, in, getting uh, into just uh, using those two as like my core three alliance. And I was trying... And I think that I think my plan was to get Lindsay and Raph in, or either no, it was either Raph, Lindsay, and Eric. Those are the three people we were considering, because I don't think at any point outside of the challenges did we ever able to talk to Issa. And I've talked to Megan in a couple of times in class, and I think I saw Issa on the bus once, but you know that was it because we never because because I don't because I heard that they never even because those two never even uh, recorded the confessional, so it's like. So I was just, I couldn't get in touch with them. So I was trying to do everyone else. So Zubin, you went on a big hunt for the idol with the first cast and clue. Um, we did not have success, but I got to say, for the clue only being basically that it was in a tree, you came pretty close. I feel like it, it was like, I, re- I remember the video where you're digging. It's like a few trees over from where that video is. But, like, what what was it like that that idol hunt, knowing you had the clue, and that was that was right before you got you got swapped into a tough spot. So what, right. what was that idol hunt like? And so pretty much what was happening was it was a combination of a couple things. I think that was about we were starting about midterm times. Things were ramping up then, so we so we were a little bit busy you know trying to make sure you weren't uh you know failing uh but i think the biggest thing was the worst part was that it was a tree and i was looking for like holes and everything and i almost thought like when i saw cj find out i was like wait did i check that tree already because i felt like at a couple times that i might check like at least a few trees multiple times so i was with so it was really just me just looking, I just went, I just went like, took a spot and was like, I'm just gonna look at every single goddamn tree. <laughs> you know, but the thing is that all I had was, you know, it's in a tree and I was like, well, wait, does C mean like C lot or something? Cause we had that play on words with, you know, with Beach Hall during the uh, scavenger hunt. Yeah. So, was, so, it could, so, so all I knew is that it was in a tree. I didn't know which tree though. Name a more iconic duo. Uh, idle clues and people reading into them too much. People overthink <laughs> no them kidding. always. But then if they don't overthink it, they're If they idiots. don't overthink them, then That's no one the can thing. get it. So it's yeah. hardest part is maybe making idle clues. <laughs> All right. Zubin, tough swap, ultimately. Um, you were in the minority with CJ. And then ultimately CJ was in a tough spot too until he nabbed the idol right after. So... Do you think you could have done anything else to get out of that tough situation? Uh, playing it back. Okay. So I was unable to talk to Mackenzie and I had done a little bit with Mark, but again, that was midterm week. The only other thing I could have felt I could have really done is maybe I could have said, you know, let's go over everyone. And cause I knew that there was no way that, 
I was going to get Mark out. You know, that wasn't happening. You know, Eric wasn't going to vote for Mark. Mark was and, and vice versa. Oh, yeah. And he already, and Mark was already out of his seat with uh, Earl and Mackenzie. So that was out. So that left, uh, Earl, so that left CJ, who I wasn't going to stab in the, stab in the back at that point, uh, <laughs> as well as Earl, who was immune, Eric and Mackenzie. So I think what I might have done was I would have probably floated around Eric. That might have worked. Of course, then again, Earl might not not have been not want to do that either. I and I know that Mackenzie and Mark wouldn't have done that. So I was trying to go for a sure thing, and I think maybe what I do is I went after the wrong person. I think I would have had a better shot to vote on Eric than voting on Mackenzie. Sorry, dude. I, I agree. No, I, I, I agree as well. I think it would have still been tough, but I think you maybe would have had a little more support there. But I have especially to on Earl What? Did you even tell me about like a to big idol briefly. Plan. Eric the Milk Goblin from his, his habanero episode yeah. in the background <laughs> of an active challenge. <laughs> I definitely said that I was the milk goblin at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, was there a fake idol plan, Zubin? What's up? I think that at some point I was looking at one of my roommate's uh, bracelets and just thinking, wait, maybe I could play that like the idol. I mean, I wouldn't have accepted it, but maybe you yeah, could lots of people. I, I, I know, I know I'm just like, you know, it's like, yeah, I got the idol, vote me out, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been spicy. Uh, Zubin, like Zubin, are you and Mark ever gonna have a game night? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this whole COVID thing blows over. Hope, hopefully, yes. Uh, right. No, Hulk I actually have a couple what? games. Hulk Hogan? Is that what COVID. You're COVID. Hulk COVID. I heard Hulk Hogan too. To be honest, what? <laughs> Hulk COVID. Hulk Hogan. Out of that. Okay. This whole when this whole pandemic thing blows over. Ho- hopefully, next semester. Uh, those of us that actually uh, come come back uh, might be able to do something. I have a couple games. Uh, yeah, join the the Catan tournament, Zubin. Yeah, we're doing a Catan tournament. Yeah, actually, I think Zubin's the one that canceled on Mark, so that's the real tea. Really? I thought. Well, Mark Zubin had a Zubin. Zubin had an exam. Yeah, uh, I was, that was you had mid- a busy week, Zubin. In a midterm. Yeah, I was okay. like studying for like thermodynamics and all that. So yeah. all right. Zubin, why didn't I wish you would let me know um, what suit color you were wearing? Because then I would have switched the tribe color, so you're matching. I just want to put it out there. I'm sorry I didn't let you match. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize. I would have totally switched Sapala and Kassin. Yeah, I would have. That would have been amazing if you got the color coordination correct. Best host in the history of UConn Survivor. Yeah, yes, time. I mean that's that's still given. But um, <laughs> Zubin, to wrap it up, what was your what was your favorite moment or part of the Survivor Yukon experience? Hmm. My favorite moment would have probably been the uh, first challenge, honestly, because that was when I was going over to Sapali. I was shit talking them. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah, I, I tried to stop Zubin like halfway across the field. I was like, Zubin. What are you doing? Why are you coming over here? He's like, I just want to check everything out, see how you guys are doing. I'm like, this guy is. <laughs> I tried to stop right. Zubin while I was filming Sapala. Z- Zubin, that's that's one of my favorite moments. I'll t- I'll tell you that. I, when I when, when you did that, I was like, all right, we got a season here. <laughs> I felt that way too, though. I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, it, it, all right, good start. It was just so funny to witness. I was just so caught off guard. He was like going, ah, ah, and then we were like, dude, what the are you very doing? first episode, like, I expected y'all to, like, be involved and, like, have a good time. I was not expecting people to come and, like, shit talk and mess with each other mid challenge. <laughs> right, well, well, Zubin, it was a pleasure to have you. Um, thank you for being part of Survivor Yukon. All right. Um, to wrap things up, I guess I just have one question for Ethan. We'll get. We'll give you a question. <laughs> oh, I have a question for you too. Wow. Um, Look at that, e- Ethan. What 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 goes into this production and being a part of a college survivor? 
Um, there was definitely a lot of learning for us to do. Um, so like you said, I originally was the first contestant. I was so on board. I, I love Survivor. Um, it's always been a part of me for like, I've been watching with my mom since I was 10 years old. Um, so when Ryan like approached me talking about college Survivor stuff, I was like, put me in. And then he was like, wait, I can't do this all on my own. I'm like, all right, put me in. We'll do this together. Um, and it definitely took some learning from both of us. Um, you did some great stuff asking help from Austin from Maryland, who is an excellent resource for us, um, researching stuff online and all sorts of things. But it took some, um, some work on like my end as well as like the other officers to like beat it out of you. Like it's not only <laughs> you running it sometimes because you tried to take on too much. So building up that team because it was the first time we were doing anything like this um and understanding how to communicate and where everyone's like roles fit together was was a lot of fun getting to like create this together with everyone um and from production standpoint it's it's, it's the most fun i've also had on campus even though i don't get to do the challenges um just getting to meet all of these amazing people we've had like 50 60 something 70 80 i don't know um, a lot of contestants at this point uh, not 80 that's, that's yeah we're, we're at around 60 or but so. we have like uh, other like officers and stuff we have like almost a survivor family of almost 100 at this point and it's been super fun to like just meet people because i didn't expect that to be the best exactly. part i thought it was gonna be like survivor so cool but like by far and away it's the people it is, though. <laughs> there's been 67 contestants no 66 six, contestants 60. okay um, well, is it, no, it, it can't be. It has to be an odd number, cause, cause of the, yeah, well, we're not gonna, no, we're not gonna get into that. We're not gonna get into that. Oh wait, no, it it's is an even number. It yeah, is yeah, yeah, spoilers, yeah, spoilers, spoilers. 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 All right, what all right. happens? No, no, no. All right, no, it isn't even. Number. We're not getting into that. All right, we're done. Um, <laughs> right, Ethan, that out. It's fine. Ethan, what was what was your question? My question for you was um very similar. What was like your like it, like journey in this as like becoming a host because. It clearly wasn't perfect at the start, but I think you definitely improved. Um, and how, how do you think it went for yourself? And what did you get out of it? I mean, for me, the, the biggest, the toughest part for me was being, being bold and being comfortable with being vocal. Because I, I feel like as a person, I'm not really, especially with a lot of strangers. I mean, I, at a group of basically 14 strangers the only people I really knew before this were Mark and Eric of this group and so being like basically a leader and directing everything everyone into it was definitely an interesting change and something I really had to just push myself with and uh, just through being with all these contestants and uh, guiding the narrative and getting to know everyone i feel like i really came out and showed that like my knowledge of survivor really helped me make some great friends and i mean god you I, almost make me feel bad about being an asshole to you almost i mean to, to continue <laughs> Just, almost a little bit um no, so i mean to continue everyone here um is definitely someone i'm friends with and, and know um since season one that was at season one, I really only knew Mark, Ethan, and Eric. So squad up. I mean, OG. There's, there's plenty of people in season mm. two and season three that I'm consistently talking with still. And our current season four, I'm sure there's there's plenty of friends that are being made and to continue from there. So the biggest part of this for me was that not only do you get the 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 recording and the epicness of just like seeing survivor played out in front of you and directing that but you get to make a a big community with it that's really shaped my uh college and life experience can i ask a ryan question sure it's kind of funny that Catherine said what she said because i i just want to know out of all of the Catherine roasts which <laughs> like i don't which one was your favorite which one like stunk oh. Whatever you want to answer. It was definitely Catherine bringing up my Tinder profile at Final Tribal Council. Because <laughs> I, was, I was not ready for it. My Tinder had been turned off for like a month and a half. I, I 
thought Catherine was at least going to just roast Alex and Lindsay, but instead she Still. took any any moment she could to throw pot shots at me. But it it made me laugh, and it, it was a good moment. But yeah, um, t- Tinder was not it, but it was fun, <laughs> and I, I appreciated that. Wow. Catherine didn't withhold all of her like swear words for Ryan. You none of you else were there for her voting and like explanations at the voting booth. Yeah. I've never heard cuss words strung together so elegantly and horrendously at the same time. It was a lot. It was a lot. Um, it, was, it was a masterpiece. I think that's majorly it, though. We're we're nearing a lot of time. I think we're at like an hour 20-ish, hour, hour 15. But uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, I just want to say for season one, uh, thank you guys for taking part in this. Are we going to find out? like? The yeah, end? what's with the poll? You, we can't even poll? People can't see the poll. We want to know what's going on with the poll. Oh, the poll. Oh, poll. Hold on. I'll bring up the poll. Wait, there's a poll? poll. I, you guys, there's you guys, a poll for every episode. You guys didn't let me know. I, I was not prepared for this. Hold on. Well, we thought that that's what your plan was, which is why me and Mark couldn't see it. Oh. <laughs> I want the tea. Well, well, my I I just switched it off because uh, there was a question for all star spots, and I didn't want you guys to see that. We'll hide that. Um, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. not going to show it on stream. I'm just going to announce whatever. Where is? Hold on. I no, I'm just saying. I googled it. Once filled it out, we'll see. They have new Google Survivor Yukon. We got our YouTube stuff showing up at the top. The Facebook page, a daily campus article. We're popping. That's we our social website. media coordinator. Shout out to yeah. Todd. What a queen. Uh, here, shout out to Todd. <laughs> she the OG. Um. Mm. All right. So I guess the the one where we're wondering about is who is your vote for survivor yukon fan favorite and i suppose the the votes are in and i vote zubin <laughs> i vote zubin uh, i also vote zubin well unfortunately the votes did not say zubin what? but our, what? Our, oh, that's our, it's rigged it's rigged our, that's not our, that's not true someone made a bot our fan favorite of uh, season 1 is going to be cj cj with the hey. 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 does he get a car <laughs> cj you do not get, you don't get, you don't get um, shit i'm gonna see a money is there you run up was zubin at least run up courtesy of sprint yeah who is run up uh, Zubin Honored. was runner up. It was uh, Zubin? I, I'm going to say Alex was the runner up. Oh, it's bogus. <laughs> oh. Zubin, if it's worth anything, even though I voted for you a bunch, you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All hey. right. But um, other than that, uh, I wanted to finish on. with season one. It's been a blast having you guys. This was always – season one is always the least amount of applications with season one. The most amount of people that we just had to like reach out, scrape together a cast. Shout out this guy. Let's go. Shout out Eric, hey. um, who joined uh, the night before. Hey, um, but no. uh, <laughs> um, it was it was a pleasure having you guys. It was a great season. You guys made it really entertaining, especially for a kind of a test run season. So I just want to thank you guys. It's been a great thing. And maybe we'll see some of you in All-Stars possibly um all when is that gonna happen, season Ryan? five Ooh. that that's next semester real time but uh um youtube time that's the uh, next century but uh <laughs> for happening but uh thank you guys thank it'll you be out before the next pandemic yeah <laughs> ideally whichever one of us get through it but uh oh, are you gonna announce uh, anything about season two since this is like last oh, yeah, uh, no were... we're gonna announce that when uh when we get to it we're, okay. We're, we're gonna we're gonna announce that when we have more solid info. I'm not gonna get anyone excited when I want to get on a a more consistent schedule this time. Which is gonna start <laughs> first, Survivor Yukon season two or the second wave of COVID? Um, <laughs> you never know. That's When's the question. second wave of COVID plan? Fall. Catherine, do you know? Fall. Season two I, should be. Let me know. I would think least. before fall. It'll be ready for the second wave. It'll be the next Tiger King season. That's two. a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Survivor. All right, but I'm going to sign off. Thank you, guys. And thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Love you, everyone.
everyone. Love we you. love you, Ryan.